Hello, welcome to my channel, or welcome back, possibly to my channel, Mark Lowe. Today, um, tonight, I want to talk to you about six symphonies for the end of the world. And actually, this is being released as four separate releases. As you can see, there are four jackets, four covers, and these are currently, uh, as I uh, record this video, um, in the process of being released week by week. And so far, uh, Bodhidharma's Awakening, number one, and Kali Yuga has been released, and on Monday, 100 Seconds will be released, and then finally, Quarter Eyes, which is an EP, will be released uh, every Monday of this month in August, and then on September 11th, 2022, they will be released as a compilation incorporating all four albums, all six tracks. They're all very long tracks, and I'm going to talk about each of the tracks in turn in this video. If you've been watching the news, if you've been awake at all during the past six months, uh, since at least, well, February 24th, say, hmm? uh, but certainly uh, prior to that as well, um, 2020, the COVID pandemic hit and the world changed. and. Since then, well, all kinds of things have been uh, rearing their ugly heads, um, unfortunately. Um, global warming, which has been talked about for ages now, um, as a coming crisis, is now really, uh, you know, hitting home. It's uh, the seriousness of, of the situation is hitting home. We have you know, floods and we have droughts and food shortages. Uh, we're also about to hit a very, very, very deep world recession. Some countries are feeling the squeeze already. The UK, for example. China. The housing uh, markets has uh, you know, crashed. There's been this kind of, it's described as a Ponzi scheme type thing. And uh, people paid into you know, buying homes years ago that uh, were never built or were only partially built. And then the companies went bankrupt or stopped for whatever reason they... Uh, you know, and uh, people have paid on these homes, they've stopped paying suddenly, and the market is crashing, and people can't access their bank accounts, and there's all kinds of issues there. And Nancy Pelosi visits Taiwan, China gets angry, right? Encircling Taiwan, we have all sorts of tensions there. I mentioned February 24th, everyone knows that Ukraine was invaded by Russia on that day, and that the war continues. They're now fighting around a nuclear power plant. Uh, it's a major crisis. They're afraid there's going to be a second Chernobyl. Um, and uh, it just seems like uh, the problems just never stop. And it's like every day waking up to the news is uh, <laughs> like a further sort of, you know, pray for humanity kind of thing. And so, well, um, today is August 20th, 2022. Obviously, I completed the cycle before August 20th, 2022. Uh, I completed the cycle before uh, Nancy Pelosi visited Taiwan uh, as well. But Ukraine was, Ukraine, Russia is happening. Um, the former prime minister of Japan, uh, Shinzo Abe, was assassinated. Um, in Japan, this was a huge shock to people around the world, and certainly the people in Japan, because guns are illegal and very rare, and uh, this kind of political assassination hasn't happened in recent years at all, uh, out in the open like this. Um, I'm going to talk about this, how that influenced this, um, and, you know, global warming, all sorts of news about the record temperatures hitting various places and consequences, the UK fires, France fires, things like this, and um, all these sorts of things, right? They all went into this. Um, but let me start at the beginning, and um, let me explain how this project came about in a sense, because in fact, it wasn't a linear planned project as a quartet or whatever. I'm not calling it tetralogy, because last year's was tetralogy. It's not and in fact, the first three pieces are full lengths, although 
both one one and three are both only one track, and they're both you know very long, one track pieces. Kali Yuga is three tracks, but they're all very long. And Quarterize is a track that is also found on Kali Yuga, but it is a completely different version. And this is you could say an EP. It's one track at twenty six minutes plus. So they're all very long tracks. But it was not planned as a cycle quartet, I'll call it a quartet. It was not planned as a quartet of albums. It was planned, it wasn't planned, it was just, the, 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 uh, the first was, was in fact Bodhidharma's Awakening. And Bodhidharma's Awakening, um, let me start there. Okay, so first let me talk about, um, a little about Bodhidharma's Awakening, the first part in the cycle. And again, it wasn't planned as the first part of a cycle at all. And in fact, um, this is, it was the first album that I completed, and I want to talk about the inception of this album as an album, or as a uh, project or a piece or whatever, because it's one long track. And prior to the recording of this, prior to the arrangement recording, you could say, I had completed a uh, similar style uh one track, actually it was two tracks, split into two 30 minutes each, um, called Bodhidharma's Dream. And it had these kind of flowers, actually the same flowers were um, it's rose petals, and they were red. And it had the eye in the middle, I think in the opposite direction, and it was Bodhidharma's Dream, when they were still rose petals. Okay, And uh, what I did was, I had been um, doing this project with uh, Tanao, Low to now, and uh, during that project, uh, well, we we performed live and so on. But the whole idea, when we did the live performances and and when we were in the studio, it was completely um, improvisational. And uh, on my part, it wasn't you could say completely improvisational in the sense that I played pieces of songs, my songs and cover songs that I've been working on in different arrangements. Uh, so the concept for this very long one-track piece that has kind of songs coming in and out of it against a backdrop of kind of ambient um, soundscape was sort of inspired by my project with Tanao. And, um, but this is totally, you know, I did by myself. The other reason, um, well, let me explain the backing, right? So Tanao's not on this. It's not his synth guitar in the background. It's not his improv. It's... Um, samples of sounds that are recorded around my apartment, this apartment, for example, like the air conditioner or the fan, um, sound of running water, um, splashing in water that I literally, you know, uh, filled the basin and, and splashed around in it, crumpling paper or plastic, um, these kinds of things, okay, uh, the buzz of the refrigerator. And I sampled all these things randomly, you could say, although with intention, and use them to create a backdrop. And, um, you know, in logic, arrange them, put different effectors on them, uh, different uh, kind of, you know, spatial things. And I uh, created this backing soundscape with uh, ebb and flow. You know, it, it, it changes, and I arrange it this way. And then atop that, the original Bodhidharma's dream was me, uh, just spoken word, it was me reciting uh, some uh, text, pieces of text, not mine, actually, um, but uh, uh, a text that were published by other authors in the past, um, and things like this. Joseph Campbell, nonfiction as well as fiction. There was some Sherwood Anderson in there, and things like this. I'm te I was teaching Sherwood Anderson at university, and uh, I put part of Winesburg, Ohio, for example. The Book of the Grotesque was in there, that kind of thing. And then uh, I made it exactly 30 minutes because I was planning on a live show at that time. So now that live show is now available on YouTube. It's actually two live shows ago. <laughs> okay. Um, and um, that became the backing for that. And I thought, well, live performances, they give 30 minutes. I'll make it 30 minutes. And then the second 30 minute track was um, instrumental. There was no spoken word. It was just the, um, just the uh, sounds. Like it was just ambient, instrumental ambient. But at the end of the first part, after all the spoken word stuff, I decided to rearrange a piece from years ago, I think 2017 or 18 or so, called um, Bodhidharma and the Frog. 
Bodhidharma and the Frog, Bodhidharma being the, the, the first patriarch of Zen Buddhism in India. There's a legend about him. Um, I won't go into it too much, but uh, I had done a, this piece, and it was kind of electronic style years ago, and released it in various forms, with remix forms, or whatever. And the lyrics from that and the melody of the vocal line, I took that and I just was playing some arpeggios on my acoustic and singing the melody and the lyrics to that became a sort of new version of that. So I included that on the original Bodhidharma's Dream. That became the genesis of Bodhidharma's Awakening, which begins with that. In terms of the, the, the backing is again these samples, kind of ambient noise, whatever you want to call them, different effectors on them, some distorted effects too, and Bodhidharma and the Frog, and um, which also appears on a recent album that came out just before this, which is more of a straight acoustic vocal album. And Bodhidharma and the Frog is also on that with the sound of like water, ocean waves in the background. It's also a video. Akiko Honda made the video for me as a collaboration. That opens this, just as it did Bodhid uh, closed Bodhidharma's dream, opens this version with the backing. And then after that finishes, you have all of these different sounds found sounds from the apartment. <laughs> it, it, strangely, right? It doesn't sound like this. There's a sound, it's, some of it sounds like wind, I was told. But it's not wind, it's actually a factorized something, you know, uh, sampled that I did. And I sampled all kinds of things. I said in the apartment, but I use my imagination, let's say. And I sampled all kinds of things, and I use them in different ways with effectors. So it's organic samples with non-organic effectors on them, but there's nothing digital in terms of it's not a keyboard or a synth at all in the backing of this piece. And then, uh, so this piece fl flows, and there are bits of other acoustic, uh, me collab um, um, improvising on the acoustic, and also uh, Chaos, which I re-recorded for this at the end, uh, a piece, an older piece, again, 2017, 18, 20, probably recorded it in 2018 or something. I think I wrote it in 2016 as an acapella piece before I could play guitar even. But anyway, uh, that piece has gone through many versions, and that sort of appears. It's called Yug. I guess this is telling me, move on. That's Bodhidharma, okay? Bodhidharma's Awakening. Kali Yug um, is three tracks. And I'm going to stop the image so it doesn't continue on, because uh, I'm not sure how long I'm going to talk about it, and I'm going to edit this later, so we'll see. Kali Yug. The age of Kali. And Kali is this fierce deity from India. And um, she is actually standing atop her dead husband, who's also a god or a, a deity, Shiva, the destroyer. There's also a version of Shiva, the destroyer. destroyer. And Kali, anyway, is... I, I, I Obviously, this image, I worked on making it this color and this effect and so on. It, it's uh, quite different from any image of Kali you will see, I think, this coloration and so on. This is my own version of it. But um, and notice, by the way, the number two here, the Roman number two here, um, if you look closely at uh, Bodhidharma's awakening, there's a Roman numeral number one in the left hand corner. This has a Roman number two. This is again a series of four, or ended up being so. Again, the first part I explained the genesis of that with Tanao and so on. It wasn't planned as the first part, but it became the first part. I'm going to explain how also they co they're connected, and they all are eventually uh, connected by sounds, themes, and so on. So the first part, Bodhidharma's awakening, it's a kind of has a Buddhist theme, right? and it's impermanence and awakening from illusion. Now we get into darker territory, in a way, with Kali Yuga, and in fact, the sound is much darker and much noisier. This is the noisiest of the four, um, if you will. When I say noisy, what I mean is that there are noise effects on it. And I thought I would demonstrate, actually, because it's kind of cool to kind of show you. And in fact, there's a video for Cauterize, which is the third piece on this, in which I'm using this, and you can kind of see it, but I'm going to demonstrate it now, sort of live on the video. I use this, uh, recently I've been using this, it's a uh, Castle, K-A-S-T-L-E. And it makes all kinds of noise. The manipulator. To make all kinds of noise, it's so faster, slower.
like this. And so the opening piece on Kaliyug, which is called Kaliyug, and the closing piece, Quarter Eyes, the opening piece is really sort of based on these sounds, if you will. There's some other, actually, sound. I believe I used a sound in the background that was um, generated by a synth sound. And there's a bit of vocals. And then this uh, is layered in various ways. I've never done before. Um, the kind of main noise part that has a kind of rhythmical feel to it was generated with this and looped and layered. And then on top of that, I kind of, you could say, improvised, like making different noises with it and uh, cutting it up and layering it in different ways uh, that couldn't possibly be done live. Uh, so it has a studio sound that's Kali It's a very dark piece, and then at the end, it kind of gets quieter again, and the vocal comes back in, and it kind of fades out. That's the first opening piece. Now, Kali Yuga, I want to explain the meaning of this for those of you who aren't familiar, and I mentioned the age of Kali. And the ancient Hindus believe that we're in the age of Kali, which is the dark age of humanity, or of the world. And that's what I mentioned. She's standing or stomping on her dead husband, and actually it has a kind of um, philosophical meaning to it that she's stamping on the ego, you know, um, and uh, perhaps she should stamp on the egos of our world leaders so that we wouldn't have so much trouble right now with, with, with threats and war and, you know, try to win, uh, you know, territory and all this stuff. This is the problem right now, maybe, in the world, or one of the problems. One of too many problems. Again, the series is sort of about this. It's what we're living through right now. And um, so Kali Yuga, the age of Kali, we're living in this age, the dark age, the dark era. It's an age of violence. Maybe hard to see here, but she's holding heads. She has multiple arms, like the right, the Hindu um, uh, deities have often have multiple arms. She's holding the heads of, you know, um, apparently you know, those who are killed in, perhaps in battle and war. The Bhagavad Gita, this ancient text, talks about war as well. It seems that humans always are at war with one another, or perhaps are at war with themselves, and that's why they're at war with one another. So, Kali. And uh, that's why I entitled the first track, which is more or less instrumental. There's a bit of vocal there, and it's just a repeated phrase, and again, and again, and again. History repeating itself, and things repeating themselves. And unfortunately, it's a very dark sort of theme. Last year was hope, right? And this year is Kali. And there's a bit of Bodhidharma there, too. Bodhidharma, too, though, um, struggled for many years before he attained enlightenment. And uh, you know, he loses his eyelids and um, all these kinds of things. So it's not easy, right? So that's Kali, track one. Track two is called 13 Minutes. And it's 13 minutes because the track ended up being exactly 13 minutes. <laughs> and I decided to call it that. And 13, obviously, the number in the West has its own significance. Less so in the East, perhaps. But And 13 minutes I did a video for. And when I edit this, maybe I'll show a bit of that. And the video and the audio as well, the, the, the bits with the train sounds and me speaking, although it's effectorized in 13 minutes, it's not 100 seconds. I'll talk about that later. Again, how the tracks connect to each other or the albums, tracks and albums. I was literally taking a walk with my iPhone running and taking video, which became the video for 13 seconds. Again, it wasn't planned. It's just, it just was a walk I was taking. And the trains were, I was walking sort of alongside the train tracks. Uh, I was alone, obviously, at night, taking a very long walk and thinking about all sorts of things. It was the day that Shinzo Abe was assassinated in Japan. It happened to be that day. I was in a contemplative state of mind, you could say. A little bit upset, I mean, just at the way that things are happening in the world. And so I was talking about that. I said, you know, it's the um, you can't hear it in 13 minutes, but you can hear it. It's the same sample used later in 100 seconds. I'll talk about it later where I'm discussing the murder and other things. The assassination, I should say. Anyway, um, 13 Minutes also has some melody, kind of sounds like a soundtrackish. That was a piece I had already created separately called The Day Before, which was based on an earlier piece and rearranged. And The Day Before has not yet been released officially. It will be released at a later date 
on a compilation called The Day Before, by the way. But that's at the core of it. But apart from that, you have some of the samples and sounds that were used in Bodhidharma's Awakening. This is um, intentional, and it links them. And that's how you know it ended up on Kali, which ended up being the second part of the series. So there's um, 13 minutes. Is a combination of those sounds the day before this kind of soundtrackish melodic piece that's based on you know a programmed in synth and so on, um, kind of a very soundtrackish thing, and then me talking uh, as I take my walk and the sounds of literally the sounds of the train, um, the you know um, you know as the train's approaching the sounds of the. Um, Bing, 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 don't cross the road, and then the train literally going by on any number of occasions, and um, it's some combination thereof, and that became 13 minutes, and that I also had literally recorded the video as I was walking, so I used that video and uh, used some effects on it and, you know, um, layering and whatever the images, doubling of the images, and on the video, which again I'll show just a bit of it here when I edit this, you can see kind of um, these pieces of text appear on the screen, which I later obviously inserted, um, which are all bits of, of, of news from from the time. When I made the video uh, around that time, uh, uh, Shinzo Abe's uh, murder, assassination, um, and um, all kinds of things that have been happening uh, around that time. They're talking about you know, global warming and sort of the outcomes of this and the, the, the uh, 4th of July in America, right? Uh, there was a guy that just you know, gunned down some people, and um, you know, so the, the problems with the gun control in America, and um, all these kind of things coming to a head, at least for me at the time, and feeling that, and I put that into the video. It's not in the music, per se, but it's in the music also, per se, because it's sort of part of what was going around my brain as I was composing this thing. So that's 13 minutes, the second track. The last track is called Quarterize, and I did a video for it, and interestingly enough, I've never talked about this before, certainly not publicly. The night I uh, decide to do Quarterize, which is literally a, um, an improvisation uh, that I did in my room, which starts with me uh, improvising on my Telecaster, using different effectors, because I have a new effector pedal I wanted to use, and I did an effector um, using different effectors, and I videotaped it. And you can see there's a video for this as well. I'll show a bit of this. Again, I effectorized the video. It's not in real time, but it is literally the video I shot. It's the, more or less the full thing, just slowed down slightly and sort of, um, again, sort of double image going uh, at different paces uh, with a bit of effectors. But it's literally the video I took as it was... Uh, recording the piece in my room with the uh, the mic and the speaker and uh, the telecaster. The first half is this, and then I use again this castle uh, making noise. Certainly at the end, there's, uh, the castle comes in. And uh, part of this quarterize, uh, the, the uh, idea, uh, the name, uh, quarterize, you know? You quarterize a wound, right? With, with, with heat, with flame. And it was, you know, global warming was one of the things I was thinking about, obviously, uh, with this. And the cover, when I show the fourth cover, um, which quarterizes, appears in two versions, right? And so the fourth part is quarterized, different version, with the cover has the flame uh, in the image, um, heat and the flame. And the fourth version I'll talk about later. Um, there's some newsreel uh, bits, samples, uh, discussing, you know, global warming and so on. So. That's one of the major themes of Quarterize. It's a very, again, sort of noisy piece. And the version on Kaliu, it's the Telecaster. There's a bit of vocals at the end, totally improv uh, improvisational. And this uh, castle noise box. And also I started playing the acoustic a bit. And there are bits of that, which you hear it more actually in the second version, I think, than the first. But it's there. So that's Kaliu. Uh, three tracks and it's 53 minutes. By the way, Bodhidharma's Awakening is one track, 43 minutes. It's 10 minutes longer, but it's split into three tracks. Let me go to the next. 
Okay, so now we come to 100 seconds, which I guess was com this was completed before the entirety of Kali was completed. Okay, I had done 13 minutes. I don't remember the exact sequence. Maybe I did this uh, before quarterize. Maybe I did it after quarterize. I don't remember exactly, but it came somewhere between, and then later I had Kali Yuga and quarterize, and then uh, decided to put 13 minutes on the Kali Yuga with the Kali Yuga pieces, Kali Yuga and quarterize, one, two, three. Make that an album. This is 100 seconds is 60 minutes, or it's actually uh, one hour and I think 40 seconds. Okay, so 60 minutes plus 40 seconds, or one hour, 40 seconds. Why is it called 100 seconds? Maybe some of you out there can figure it out when you think about the themes of these four albums. 100 seconds, there's something called the Doomsday Clock, and in fact, this was the final um, caption in the 13 minutes video, where I have these captions coming up about different news pieces. The Doomsday Clock is mentioned there, and the Doomsday Clock set, uh, it's a kind of metaphorical clock uh, of the time we have left until the end of humanity, the end of the world for humans and the earth. And what are they talking about? It's not science fiction, although it sounds like it. it sounds like George Orwell, sounds like, you know, Cormac, Cormac McCarthy's The Road. And it kind of is. Um, you know, how much time do we have left? Um, right now, Russia and Ukraine are having a war basically <laughs> inside of around uh, a nuclear power plant that could at any time overheat and go off and set off a nuclear, you know, uh, huge nuclear accident. North Korea is threatening to, you know, they, they fired missiles into uh, Thailand couple days ago and killed some people, a number of, you know, a bunch of people, and, uh, um, you know, they just, apparently the South Korea said, well, we'd like to pay you to uh, demilitarize to, 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 to stop, you know, producing nuclear arms, and they laughed at them. Um, Putin has threatened nuclear war repeatedly, not to mention that they're fighting again around this plant, and uh, China has, obviously, uh, nuclear uh, arms, and they're threatening Taiwan, and America is threatening, well, not threatening China, but they're saying, right, we're going we're gonna, to uh, back Taiwan, and, 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 and there's all kinds of tensions going, and all this stuff. We have a nuclear, major nuclear accident, na major nuclear war, that's the end, right? Um, drought, starvation, people die. Um, so global warming, right, and the effects of this over time. And they're getting more serious. We also have this recession coming. Who knows what that's going to bring. And all these things. And so this group of, I guess, scientists uh, created this metaphorical doomsday clock where they say, how long do we have until midnight? And midnight means the end. Could be, again, nuclear war. Could be disease. Could be virus like a COVID or like, uh, now we have monkey pox. Uh, I don't, you know, it's not as deadly as, I guess, the early forms of COVID or whatever, but it's, some people have died from it, and it's certainly another, it's another virus that's spreading. Um, and, and who knows what the next is going to be, right? So it could be virus, um, could be nuclear war, could be the effects of global warming and uh, natural disaster, um, etc. How much time do we have? So in 2020, this group decided, they, they, they shifted it up from what it had been previously. I think it had been... I could be wrong. I don't remember now. I think it was two hours or something. I don't know. They, eventually, it, it, it creeps forward and it becomes, it goes from hours or minutes, or maybe it was two minutes. It was two minutes to midnight. I think Iron Man had, had a song, Two Minutes to Midnight. That was that. Right? Two minutes to midnight. And now, now, in 2020, it moved to 100 seconds. So now we're in seconds, not minutes. And uh, it seems to me, this is two years ago, now, you know, maybe the beginning of the COVID pandemic or something, 2020, and then we're still in the COVID pandemic, even after vaccinations. And now we've got Ukraine, Russia, we've got China threatening to invade Taiwan, and America threatening to then fight back and so on. And we have these alliances, well, China, Russia, we have 
all this stuff going on. Anyway, needless to say, Israel, right, is bombing Gaza. North Korea shot missiles into Thailand, apparently. And uh, all kinds of threats. Alliance is going this way, that way, right? Putin saying, I'm going to arm uh, Russia's allies. And everyone's got nukes. So, 100 seconds. Now, ironically, you could say, uh, compared to, say, Kali Yuga, even Bodhidharma's Awakening, if you really want to compare, like, this is the quietest of those of the three overall. This is very quiet and ambient. Susurrations, and, like, it sounds like leaves blowing the wind at times, and very quiet. And it's generated by mostly, um, you know, synth and samples and so on. It's very quiet, it's very ambient, it's almost like, like a Brian Eno type ambient, almost, type ambience. Album, it's quiet, mostly. It's Like I say, it's an hour over an hour long. And so obviously, as it moves on, there's some changes, some subtle changes, some bell-like sounds come in, adding to the wind sounds and the susurrations, and so on. And eventually, as I mentioned earlier, that there was these samples I had used in 13 minutes, which came from the walk, which was also included in the video, with the trains rushing by and me talking, just talking to myself as the camera ran my iPhone uh, about things I had on my mind, in my brain. I was talking in Japanese, not in English, to myself, because I live in Japan. You know, I, every time I do a talk, I have to decide whether to do in Japanese or English subtitle or not. I was talking to myself in Japanese, to myself and to the camera, to the in the speaker, microphone and me. And so I also use that sample, but it doesn't come until quite, you know, three quarters of the way or so, I guess, into an hour long piece. Most it's just instrumental. And then you hear the sounds of the trains come in, which were also included in 13 minutes. But here, 13 minutes, I heavily effectorized it. So the vocals are, you cannot, if you understand Japanese, you still, you won't be able to tell what I'm sort of saying. It's effectorized and it, it's almost, you know, like this. So, but in a hundred seconds, I intentionally brought the, the voice up a little bit more and, you know, I'm discussing the state of the world and talking about all these things happening at the time. It was the day of the assassination, Shinzo Abe, what was happening at the time, things they'd been reading about. They'd found like you know, plastic inside humans and their organs and things because environment, environmental issues, global warming issues, the assassination, the Ukraine war. This was before China, before Pelosi's visit, before China threatened Taiwan, started doing military exercises, which is happening now still. And it's escalating again, despite, you know, China's sort of economy's falling apart and so on. Who knows where that's going to go? But, so that was 100 seconds. And, like I say, three quarters of ways or so through. If you understand Japanese, you can understand what I'm talking about. If you can't use your imagination, I've just given some examples of things I talk about. And that's, you know, and then that part goes out and then it gets kind of on me again and into the end. And it's a, a very quiet, a very extended sort of soundtrack. And I was going to end this series with this. It was going to be just a, a, a triptych, a trilogy. And this was going to be the end. 100 seconds, right? 100 seconds and then midnight. But I had been experimenting with quarter eyes, which I'd done, like I said, the video for. And uh, I had done, I had mixed a couple different versions and actually the version that ended on Kaliuk even is in the original mix. The original mix is the video I did, which is slightly different, and it has these samples. I decided to take the samples out of the Kaliuk version, and then I decided to put them back in to the version that I'll now show. Sorry, I'm just going to go here. Yeah, this quarterized, right? I said the flame, the heat image, uh, lighting, and, and the leaf. It's going to be, you know, the, the uh, it's like the, the forest fires, right? They go up in flames, or the house is going up in flames because of the heat. So, Quarter Eyes, uh, this version has the samples, and it starts with a kind of life and death, the sound of a baby crying. There's a uh, talk about life and death, and uh, then it goes into uh, primarily um, news reels, uh, uh, talks about uh, the environment heating up and the effects of this around the world. That was actually from, I think, the spring or something, so it's even earlier than 
it's now it's right August, and this was like I think July when I finished. Anyway, the remix. So I did various mixes. The the, the mix I put on on Kaliug took the samples out. The mix on this that I ended up using, not only did I put the samples back in, but later I decided also to add beats, much later actually, because originally the quarter as I was going to release this fourth part as another mix of this that had the samples, but not the beats. And I thought, you know, this whole thing, it has almost no beat, well, basically no beats in it. One, two, three. And it's all sort of dark ambient, ambient, dark ambient, and what you could call noise or, you know, like the Bodhidharmas have some acoustic and, and uh, vocals and stuff, but um, there was no beat, there's no beats, no steady sort of, you know, beats throughout the series. So I decided to do a kind of, it's not really techno remix, it's not really techno, but it's a bit, it has some sort of, you know, pulsating techno-ish beats uh, in the first part of it, this version. That's, that was intentional, and it also has the samples, like I say, going throughout. Uh, but those beats, they get kind of stronger and stronger, and I layered them, and they become sort of more and more intense, and even almost sort of dancey in a way, while the noise and other sounds are going on around, I took the Telecaster out of it, because it seemed like it was too much. And then, at some point, the beats start to sort of slowly fade out. They dissipate, and then um, there's a bit of a, a vocal that you can't hear in the original version that actually was something I had said sort of improvisatory and it was sort of buried and I, I brought it up to the front uh, and then the warriors came they fell from the sky which again ironically this is before Taiwan but I guess you know I'm thinking about war and, and this and uh, you know the planes and all that but so I, this is the version in parentheses, and then the Warriors came, quarterize, the fourth part of the series. And after the beats kind of fade, um, I brought the, uh, the sort of me playing with this noise maker, if you will, and the vocals where I'm, I'm kind of improvising and playing the acoustic and all these parts come to the front. And it's also factorized in different ways to make it interesting. And that's the last part of quarterize. Um, so again, you can sort of maybe see how all the pieces are linked in some ways. Quarterize, obviously, there's two versions with this and Kali Yuk version. Um, 13 Minutes uses some of the samples used in Bodhidharma's Awakening in the background. The samples from 13 Minutes with the trains and the speaking is in 100 seconds. There are all kinds of links between the six pieces four albums, and basically Kali Yuga is the only one that has more than one piece, right? So Bodhidharma, 100 seconds, and this version of Quarterize, those are the pieces on there. Kali Yuga has Kali Yuga, 13 minutes, and the first version of Quarterize. So it's six pieces, so I decided then, in the end, to create, this is what I showed in the opening, um, a compilation of all six pieces together. So it's one, two, three, four, five, six, and I called it Six Symphonies for the End of the World. The six pieces together, and it runs, interestingly, at three hours and three minutes. Make of that what you will. And this will be released on 9-11, after the full series has gone. So the first part, Bodhidharma's Awakening, um, I'm thinking 12, 11, 10, 9, 8. Okay. This was released on August 8th, 8-8. Eight, eight. That's that repeating number. That's Monday. These are all released on Monday of August. The second Monday of August, Kali Yug, 8-15, was India's independence, interestingly. And that's Kali Yug, this Indian sort of symbol. 100 seconds will be released this coming Monday. So, uh, 20... Second eight, 22, 2022. So again, you have the repeating number. And then the quarter eyes will be released on the final Monday of August. I think the 27th or something. Is that right? No, 28, 29th, 8-29. Then 9-11, the four together as a compilation will be released um, with this cover, just which the four covers put together. Um, again, 
it wasn't intended as a quartet or whatever. It wasn't intended as six symphonies originally. I've kind of talked about how this came about, but certainly the themes are connected. Certainly they were created sort of back to back. I sort of shifted a couple things around. Originally I was gonna do 100 seconds and 13 minutes together, because right, 13 minutes, 100 seconds. I moved 13 minutes to Kaliug and Quarterize, and then I did the new, newer mix of that to round out the series. This again was more, it's more connected on, not only to Bodhidharma's dream, which is now sort of not available. I could make it available sometime, but uh, with the uh, spoken word, uh, and also to um, Waves Between Emptiness, which I released um, earlier, uh, which is an acoustic album because the acoustic pieces, Bodhidharma's, Bodhidharma and the Frog and uh, Chaos, uh, also appear on that in uh, different versions that are not connected to the soundscape bit. It's, they have uh, different mixes. So there you have it. There's the uh, six symphonies, and I say for the end of the world, and I pray to whatever power, <laughs> and also to our world leaders. Maybe they need to have the ego crushed by the terrifying Kali or Durga uh, deity and, and just, you know, let's work toward uh, fixing things rather than making them worse than they already are. We're already in big trouble. Global warming and uh, you know, droughts and floods and, and China too, by the way, the Yang, Yangtze, is it? Yangtze, Yangtze. The, 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 the largest river in China and in all of Asia is dried up. It's drying up. Another thing, 11,000 people without water and uh, they're shutting factories down. Not only the economy of China, right, but this is, they can't produce crops. How's this going to affect us? Do we really need to bomb each other and have nuclear war threats? It's 100 seconds, right? How much time do we have left as a species? on this earth. We can't all fly to uh, outer space like Jeff Bezos, right? So let's take care of ourselves. Let's take care of the earth. Stop fighting and bombing each other and shelling each other, polluting the environment, which is, you know, shitting in our own nest, essentially, to use that metaphor. Um, and, uh, you know, chill out. Accept ourselves, accept each other. Make this world a better place for ourselves and for each other. You know, I'm not a hippie, but you know, make music, make, make love rather than war. Sounds like a good idea to me, but not everyone agrees. And the world is what it is. We can do what we can do. This is my series. And if you're interested in experimental music, ambient music, noise music, uh, improvised music, sampling, organic sampling, uh, electronics, all that stuff. Then uh, give it a go. If you like Brian Eno, if you like Sakamoto Ryuichi, um, particularly the stuff he's done with uh, like Alba Noto or even some of the solo stuff and async and that. Um, if you like, uh, again, any kind of experimental music, improvisational music, this may interest you. And also it has a theme, although it's mostly instrumental this time. Very long pieces, soundscapes, soundtracks. I'm Mark Lowe, and um, thank you so much. I have other things coming out. A lot of them are, are things from the vaults. This is the newest series I've created. I'm working on new things, or I'm, 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 I'm going to be working on new things soon. I've got ideas, and I've got some live shows coming up too. But I'm working towards sort of some new things. But the new things are also going to incorporate older things, if that makes sense. Um, reincarnations. Um, some things I had created in past years. Uh, more sort of structured songs with A, B, chorus, vocals, beats, you know, melodies, bass, and not all improv. But again, I'm going to incorporate some of the newer things, the newer sounds with that, I think, and some of the noise and improvisational aspects with uh, the kind of songs and beats and, and, and sort of uh, more, I don't want to say catchy melodies, I've never been a pop star, uh, pop, 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 pop songwriter, but you know, um, something that's kind of 
both new and old at the same time, which means it'll be very new. It'll be something totally different. So stay tuned for that. In the meantime, keep your eyes out. Next Monday, um, 100 seconds, final Monday of August, the uh, second version of Quarter Eyes with the Beats, and uh, then the whole thing will come out as a compilation on 9-11. And look out for some other things, too, after that. I've already got other things in the pipeline that will be released from the vaults. Thank you very much uh, for your time, for your interest, for your attention. Mark Lowe signing off, and, you know, peace, and uh, if we can't have it on the outside, we can at least try and have it on the inside, right? Let's do our best. Thank you so much. Take care. Talk to you soon, hopefully. Be well.